The purpose of this video is to discuss the properties of the text display object. So how to use it and all of the different properties that you can change about it. To add a text display object to your experiment, simply take one from the toolbox on the left hand side of the screen and drag it anywhere in your experiment as long as it's on a procedure. It will automatically create the name text display one. You can change this by right clicking on it and clicking on the rename button. Now double click on the text display object to open it in eStudio's workspace. Initially, it's going to look relatively uninteresting. This is just a simply a blank white field in order for you to enter your text. Now the text will appear in the top center of the screen, but that's not necessarily where it's going to appear when you run it. If you click on the properties page icon, we'll discuss this further. So first you'll notice the text. You can edit the text either directly on the text display object in the workspace, or you can change it in the text field here. The next two properties down, align horizontal and align vertical, allow you to determine where the text is going to be placed on the screen. It is currently set to center and center, which means the text will display in the very middle of the screen. However, you can change the align horizontal to left, right, and an attribute reference. You can also change the align vertical to top bottom or an attribute reference if you would like the properties to vary from trial to trial. The clear after property lets you determine if this is being wiped at the very end of its function. The for color allows you to change the font color. So if we'd like to change the font for, to navy, for example, click apply and you will see the font change immediately. The back color allows you to change the color of the background. So for example, I wanted a gray background. Change it and then click apply and you'll see the change appear immediately. The back style, either opaque or transparent, allows you to determine if you can see through the back of the object if you'd like to overlay it on top of other objects. The word wrap property allows you to wrap the words around once you've hit the edge of the screen, so then it will indent to a new line and continue typing. And the display name lets you know which display object it will be displayed. If it's set to blank, then it will default to the default display object, which is the top one listed in your experiment object. The frame tab allows you to change how the text looks on the screen. So is the text display object going to take over 100% of the screen or a smaller percentage of the screen? The position, the X and Y position, as well as the X and Y align will let you know where this text display object goes in relation to the screen as well. So the height and width determines how big it is and the X and Y determines where on the screen it's located. Generally speaking, 100% for both height and width and center and center for X and Y are perfect. X and Y align is like determining if it is left aligned right aligned or center aligned. Right now the text is currently center aligned, so whenever I start typing, the text will spread out from the center. However, if I would like this to act more like a Word document, then I would have my X align set to left and my Y align set to top. So then it will go from top to bottom and left to right. And finally, border color. So will there be a border around my text display object or will there not be? Generally speaking, this can be set to zero. The font allows you to change the font of the text display object. Keep in mind that it only edits the font for the entire text display object and I can't change this on a per word basis. So I can change the font name and this just looks at all the fonts that are installed on your computer. So if you'd like to have more, you can install more on your computer and it will find that as well. The size just allows you to change the font size. Whether or not the font is bold, italic, underlined, or strikeout can be toggled on or off with these yes and no properties. And these can also be attribute references if you want to change them on a per trial basis. The duration input tab is similar to the duration input tab on many other E objects. The duration or how long the object is on the screen can be set here. The data logging and exactly what data can be logged can be changed right here. The timing mode, either event, cumulative, or custom, can be toggled right here, and the pre-release can be changed here as well. Now the input mask portion allows you to determine how you're interacting with this text display object. Generally speaking, most people choose to interact with the text display object via keyboard, but you also have the option to do mouse and button as well. So we will simply do keyboard for the sake of example. Under the response options portion of the input masks tab, you will see the allowable section here, this is whatever key you are allowed to press whenever this object is on the screen. Is there a correct answer to pressing a key on the screen? If there is, you would put this property right here. The time limit property can be set to same as duration until feedback, end of proc, infinite, or any value you'd like, including an attribute reference. Now the time limit property and the duration property seem very similar at first, but they're actually quite different. The duration property allows you to determine how long the object stays on the screen. 
the time limit property allows you to determine how long you have to respond to this object. So I keep this as same as duration, so I can press a button on this text display object for the entire 1000 milliseconds that it's on the screen. If I would like it to be less than that, then I would change it to something smaller, let's say 500. That way, after 500 milliseconds of this text display object being on the screen, I can no longer respond to it. If I would like it to be much longer than the object itself, then I could change it to a not much larger value. We'll say 5,000, for example. And then the end action allows us to determine what happens whenever a response has been made to this object. So do I terminate the object? Does nothing happen? Or do I jump to a different point in the experiment? The task events tab, like every task events tab, allows you to time lock certain events with different points in the experiment. So you can see here, we have an onset time task event, we have an offset time task event, a start time, a finish time, and an action time. There is also some input mask related task events and then some general device related task events. The experiment advisor allows you to log different experiment advisor properties about this object. So either onset to onset stats, onset delay stats, or load time stats. The logging tab allows you to choose what data you are currently logging for this object. And the sync tab allows you to sync the onset and the offset of this object with a vertical blank or opt out of that. And the common tab allows you to change the name of the object, a tag associated with it, and any notes you may have. The script generation underneath allows you to determine if this script is being generated or if this object is being generated at the top of the procedure or just before it is run. If you set it to inherit, it is going to default at before object run. And then this handles conditional exit little checkbox allows you to conditionally exit out of the experiment on this object. So that is all the properties of the text display object. Thank you very much for watching.